without further ado, please help me welcome on Julie Lopez. Julie Lopez, how are you doing tonight? Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me here. As a, yeah, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm so excited to have you on. It's going to be super powerful. Listen, guys, before the broadcast, we were both saying, you know, she's like, I feel so nervous. I was like, I feel nervous. But the thing is, every time we're going to get on these live streams, we never know what God is going to do. So there's that mm -hmm. sense of like that beginning nervousness of what God is going to do. But I really believe tonight, Julie, that the Holy Spirit is just going to speak out of us, that the Holy Spirit is going to heal. The Holy Spirit is going to deliver. And there's people in the chat right now that say, man, I was in witchcraft for years and God just brought me out. And so I know there's a lot of people that are just coming out of witchcraft witchcraft there's a lot of Christians that honestly Julie and you know this they don't ever hear about witchcraft in their church especially in America right pastors mm -hmm. don't talk about it they don't discuss it and so I think it's important that we pull the covers on the enemy we expose the works of darkness we tell people the dangers of astral projection of Ouija boards of seeing mediums of yoga of meditation all this new age stuff that you've seen opens the door to demons I've seen opens the door to demons so what I love to do is just Again, this is your platform, this is your show, feel liberty, don't feel nervous, don't feel restricted. Just sharing your testimony, you know, what you were raised in, how you were involved in witchcraft, and then we'll go into how you got saved and, and what you're doing now. So feel free, the floor is yours just to share your testimony. So, yeah, so first of all, I just wanna say that many people say like, why do you speak so much about demons? Why are you always talking about, you know, the occultism and demons and darkness and deliverance? And let me tell you something, like, we are not talking about darkness to exalt darkness, but we are doing it to expose darkness and exalt the name of Jesus. So yes. this is what deliverance ministry is about. It's about exposing darkness and also uh, 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 um, for Jesus to manifest through us. So that is the first thing that I want to say. And I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you take control Lord. over this life, that Lord, that every person that is watching right now, Lord, that can be set free. And I just declare, Holy Spirit, that it's going to be you through me uh, speaking what you want me to say. And I just declare, Father, an atmosphere of freedom right now, Father. We come against every spirit of division, of anxiety, every Father, a spirit that's trying to come against the connection, Father, right now in Jesus' name. We shut down the four corners of our houses with the blood of Jesus. And we just declare, Father, a mantle of invisibility upon our lives right now. Thank you, Father, because we have overcome by the power of the blood of Jesus and by the power of the testimony. And one more time tonight, Jesus, your name is going to yes. be glorified. So we just exalt your name right now, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So yes, yeah, so Lord. for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Julie Lopez. Um, I'm originally from Colombia. This is where I am right now. I moved one week ago from the UK. The Lord sent me and my family here uh, to Latin America to do ministry. So we basically gave up our life in the UK just to come in here and to, and to uh, follow God, God's dream. So I'm back in my land after 25 years. And wow. the Lord told me, I'm sending you to Colombia as Moses. I took you out of your land, gave you an education, raised you up in Europe, and now I'm sending you back as Moses. So that for me was... Um, impactful right so i was born here in colombia and it's actually amazing that i'm sharing my testimony from from this country so um i was born in colombia i moved to spain when i was uh, probably like five or six years old and then i was raised in spain and i was moved to the uk when i when my dad died i was 19. so my family we never we never learned witchcraft from a book we never attended any school of, you know, witchcraft spells. So we never did that. It was so natural in our family that we never, we didn't even call our ourselves like witches. Oh, never. So my great grandmother, she died in 2019, and she never called herself a witch. She wow. never, but she used to do. Um, she used to be a medium, so people used to go to her to talk to the dead so she demons used to come to her and speak through her and you know mediums use um familiar spirits and they speak and it's not actually the person Talk about speaking it. the dead 
is, is, is the familiar spirit. So these familiar spirits, they are assigned to certain families and they know the history and the background of the family. So she was talking through those demons, used to do also abortions, healings, obviously not real healings, exorcism. So she, she used to do actually um, all of these things. And then what happened was that obviously she uh, got involved, um, my mom, then my mom, me. But as I said before, this was completely normal for us. This was our daily bread. So we never call ourselves witches. We never learn from, 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 from a book how to cut spells. Like it was natural. We will come with an idea. Okay, let's do, let's do this to open portals. Let's do, let's speak to demons. Let, let, so we, we just did it like natural. So when people ask me, was the name of the spell that you were casting? I'm like, I thought we never named them. We just did it and it worked, right? Wow. So what happened was that I remember since a really young age, I remember I used to have like this, my spiritual senses were quite activated since a really young age. And I believe that when I was young, my great grandmother took me to a place with a man and she placed me into this circle of fire and they were doing something like a sort of ritual with me there, but I was wow. really young. I was like two years. But the weird thing is, even though I was so young, I still remember clearly certain things that happened to me when I was really young. One of them was dreams and another one was supernatural encounters with the enemy. And I just want to say something, something that I found really interesting when I became Christian was the similarities between darkness mm. and light and how the enemy copies absolutely everything. And I would like to talk maybe later about tongues, about sacrifices and the blood of Jesus and about prophetic acts. Because coming out from that place, I realized that, wow, why Christians, they are not doing this and some people do. And it's so much you know, confusion and division in one thing and the other, and people don't understand the power of the blood and mm. the sacrifice and what is the meaning of that. And that is the basic of Christianity. If you yeah. don't know the power of the blood, what is the sacrifice? You have missed the point completely of what Come Jesus on. did in the cross for you. So when I became Christian, I realized like, wow, you know, darkness, we used to speak in tongues, you know, for sacrifices, we used to use blood and wow. prophetic acts because witchcraft is prophetic acts, right? And then I became Christian and I'm here like, like Holy Spirit, like, so if I do this, am I doing witchcraft? And the Holy Spirit told me the enemy doesn't copy, the, the enemy doesn't create, the enemy copies. Wow. So the enemy takes everything that was given to us and he copies. And one of the things that I realized was the rainbow. The rainbow was given to us as the perfect covenant. Come and on. now they are using it for the LGBT, right? Mm -hmm. So then I realized, wow, so Christians are calling witchcraft what it was given to us. And now this is why we have so much warfare in church. And this is why churches are not doing warfare because the church doesn't know spiritual warfare and the church doesn't know how the enemy works. So wow. for you to be able to go to a spiritual warfare, for you to be able to do deliverance, I'm sorry, let me tell you something. You need to know how the enemy works. It's Come not on. about you, it's not about you giving more priority to the enemy, but everything that happens in the natural realm is a manifestation yes. of, when, of what is happening in the spirit. So when a soldier, when an army is going to war, they first analyze, you know, who That's is good. their enemy. And it's the same thing that as, as Christians, we should, we should be doing. Who is our enemy? How is our enemy attack? And then with those strategies, that's how we go and take territory and we do deliverance on people. So I didn't want to go on that way. But that's so good. So, so what happened was that, um, so that happened when, when I was young, that kind of, sorry guys, you hear dogs in the background. Oh, it's okay. We can't you, hear um, and uh, what happened was that, so my great grandmother did that kind of ritual with me when I was young. I believe something was activated in me at that time. But also what happened was that my aunt, so she was the first one in the family to be Christian by that point. She was taking me to church. She was taking me to Sunday school when I was really young. So I believe when I became Christian, I asked God, like, why are you protecting me so much? I could have died in so many occasions 
why I didn't die and why other people die. And the Lord told me because your life was consecrated. There was a fight in the spirit when you were young mm. for darkness and light. And your aunt, by taking you to church every Sunday, she was consecrating you. And I remember myself, then I started to have these visions of being in Sunday school and seeing the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in church. And I was just crying and giving thanks to God because I was being consecrated. So that's when I believe the spiritual warfare in my life has started to happen because now darkness was fighting for me, but also Jesus was fighting for me. Wow. So the first encounter that I had with the enemy, remember no one, like I didn't have anyone telling me about, you know, darkness, demons, like any of that. It was just natural for me. It was just experiences. And what happened was that when I was young, I had this, this was my first encounter. I was sleeping with my mom. And suddenly I hear someone entering the room. I wasn't dreaming. I wasn't, I wasn't hallucinating. It was real. I hear someone coming in, like into the room and I hear steps like that. I don't know if you guys can hear. Coming inside the room. And suddenly this evil thing, this demon was speaking in tongues and mm. he was singing. So he was speaking in tongues and singing and he was like, but I knew that his voice was evil. I knew that it was not right because the atmosphere suddenly became really heavy and mm. with a lot of fear, right? So this thing came in inside the room and he was going around the room, singing in tongues, singing in tongues. I didn't even know what he was saying because I didn't know what type of languages that was. So he was singing in tongues. And then what happened was that he started to touch my feet. So he lifts up the blankets and I felt these hands, like really hot hands touching my legs and my feet. And for many years, I had issues in my knees. I had to quit playing basketball. I had to quit playing uh, wow. um, dancing. And it, it wasn't until recently that someone from uh, uh, the ministry that I'm part of, I told him, my knees keep hurting. I can't even bend down anymore, even to pray, even to worship. I can't do it. He came for me. He prayed for me. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of that experience. And he told me, even from that age, the enemy was binding you because he knew that you would travel to, to the nations. I, wow. I also love to flag. I love to dance. So the enemy was kind of like bringing infirmity in my knees. And from that moment, something broke. And my knees, I, I, I didn't feel any pain anymore. Come so on. I believe that something happened that day. So wow. I had that experience. And then when that was happening, I remember I passed out. I don't know what happened. And the next day, my mom wake up. And all my family knows this. They know that Yuli uh, uh, saw Satan. They say Satan because they didn't even know. And what happened was that the same day, I was looking myself in the mirror. So just to let you know that I almost lose my mind because of that experience. I was so young. No one explained to me anything. I just knew something came in my room. He was trying to grab me. I keep hearing these things. But obviously because of the spiritual battle that it was around, I didn't know how to uh, deal with that. So then the next day, I was looking myself in the mirror and suddenly I saw these eyes of fire in the mirror coming to me like that. Again, I was like shocked. I didn't know what I was experiencing. And when I became Christian, curious enough, I had a dream. And in this dream, I saw Jesus walking in the street and he kept calling me, he kept calling me. So I, I was just running towards Jesus and I was just, Jesus, wait for me, wait for me. So I keep following him. He started to go up some stairs and I went up with him. When we reached the top, Jesus turned around. His face became like, like, like a lion with, eye, with fire in his eyes. And he jumped on me. And when I wake up, the Holy Spirit told me the experience that you had when, when I was young, it was the fire, the lion of Judah. You having that re revelation and that encounter. But because I was experiencing all this darkness, so all of these experiences for me were... Um, really strong if you want to speak just let me know no no no. it's good it's good I'm, I'm i'm getting fired up i'm listening it's so good so 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 uh, uh, all of that happened so i grew up 
um, experiencing all of these things, obviously a, a lot of abuse, also physical abuse, psychological abuse as I grew up. Then after that, we moved to Spain. So in Spain, uh, what happened was that my mom used to attract all of these witches. And the reason why is because a, a demons attract themselves. Yep. I don't know if you have ever heard like, oh, I deal with this. And then I'm having friends that also deal with the same thing. And I'm like, those are demons that, you know, attract themselves like, yep. like magnets, right? So my mom used to attract all of these witches. So uh, what happened was that at the age of 12, something in me got activated. So I was having already dreams. I was having visions. My um, ear has been always quite sensitive. So even now I have to sleep with earplugs because I, I keep hearing things. So I have to actually, when I go to sleep, put something in my ear so I could sleep. So at, at the age of 12, suddenly I started to read people's minds and I didn't know wow. anything about this. No one told me. I started to read people's mind. I started to realize that, oh, my dreams now are happening. They are becoming, they are becoming true. I'm declaring things and I'm like killing people with my words. And these things wow. are manifesting. And I remember at the age of 12, I wake up one morning to go to school and I had a dream the night before. And the dream was about a terror attack in Madrid. Some trains exploded. And ne the next morning at 8 a.m., I put the news and they were saying that, you know, that there, that there was an explosion on the trains and blah, blah, blah. I got so shocked that I started to cry because I didn't know how to control that. Like, mm. no one told me, like, Yuli, you have this. So what happened was that my mom brought inside the house a witch, a white witch. So for those of you that don't, don't, don't know there different types of witchcraft. Yeah, explain the different witch. types of witches, the white witch, the black witch, because mm -hmm. people hear, you know, white witch, oh, that's the ones that aren't bad. But explain to us the difference between the white witch and the black witch. So the white witchcraft is basically the ones that they, they say is innocent. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, you know what, this is, this is nothing. But this is what I always say, like, it's not about being good or bad, but it's about who is your source. Mm. Which spirit is guiding your spirit, your experience? This is why for us, the prophetic is guided by who? By the Holy Spirit. Yes. If you are Christian and you are using certain things or doing prophetic acts, not guided by the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something, you're doing witchcraft. Mm. So this is why between the prophetic and witchcraft, there is this thin line that you can cross at any time if you're not guided by the Holy Spirit. So why magic? We used to do white magic, like innocent white um, ma magic, like white, white, white spells, no harming anyone, loving nature, right? And then black magic, we also had like green magic, red magic, all of that stuff. But from one point to another one, we have also the black magic. So this is the one that is used to control people, to manipulate people, to even to kill people, to put infirmities on people, to bind people in poverty, in infirmities. So that is the black uh, witchcraft and it's used also with a blood, animal, uh, human blood. So that is the black witchcraft. So this white witch came inside the house and she told my mom, your daughter has something and we need to train her. So wow. she became my first uh, mentor, my, my first uh, uh, trainer. And she started to tell me all of these things that you are experiencing, all of these things is because something has been activating in, in you and you need guidance. So she started to, to teach me why uh, witchcraft, how to read candles, how to, you know, declare things in the atmosphere and things will change. This is why prophetic people, we need to be careful because the anointing of the prophet is in their mouth. The anointing mm. of the prophetic people is in their mouth. What, what you are declaring, you are releasing those words into the atmosphere. If it's bad, the demons are there, grab those words and manifest them into the reality. This is why some of you might be saying, why am I suffering with this? Why are my children doing this? Or maybe you release some words into the atmosphere that you need to remove the legal right to the enemy in order for the enemy to live and to break that legal right. So she started to tell me, you know, the power of the words. But she told me, you cannot use your words to harm people, to do this uh, type of things, change all of that for good, your dreams. She taught me how to control my dreams, how to like switch, 
having bad dreams to good dreams. She basically told me about the power, the inner power that I had and how to control that power and how to use that for good. Obviously, wow. it's not good. Every type of witchcraft is bad. Say Let me it. explain that again. Every type of witchcraft <laughs> is bad. Don't tell yes. me that you are a Christian. And I, this is really makes me angry. Christian people doing tarot cards reading. Come Christian on. people burning sage. Christian people going to mediums. And I'm like, are you Christian? You know, in the Bible said that you cannot drink for the cup of the of Come the on. enemy and from the cup of God. Like, or you are here or you are there, but you cannot be lukewarm, right? So, so good. After this, uh, so I, I was trained by this witch. Then we moved to a different city, right? And what happened was that a black, a black witch or a witch that was in black witchcraft uh, came to our house. My mom became like best friends with her. But also my mom always had a best friend here in Colombia and she was always like her witch. She was always astro projecting into our, our house. She could see in the spirit, the state of our house. So she will come in there. She will tell us, okay, guys, there is something in here. You need to do this. Like she will kind of like guide me and also like train us in that area. So she was like a witch of her rank, but um, she wasn't moving in black witchcraft as such, right? So wow. when this black witch, let's call it like that, she, she wasn't black, she was moving black witch yeah, stuff. Like that. Gotcha. I just want to make that clear because a lot of people have said, oh, you're saying the black witches. No, yeah, no, yeah. a witch that moves in black witchcraft. So this witch in Colombia told my mom, you had left someone come into your house that is not coming with good intentions. Be careful. But my mom was thinking that she was jealous because witches are territorial. Right. Yes. So when you are assigned into a place, you don't want to leave that place. That is your place. You have authority over that house, over that region, and you don't want to move from there. Right. So this witchcraft, this black witch came in. And again, she told my mom, your daughter has something. We need to train her. So again, my mom hear that again. And she was like, it's all yours. So we did a ritual and wow. they consecrated me to a principality that is in Santeria is one of the, is called Huacaipuro. So it's one of the three Bene, Venezuelan powers. So in the Venezuelan wow. powers, there are three, Maria Leonza, Negro Felipe, and Huac, 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 uh, the, sorry, Huacaipuro. So what happened is that he now became my spirit guide, right? So this so spirit, could, you're talking about a principality, the spirit became your spirit guide once she dedicated, basically she dedicated you to him. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. So he and this demon, basically what he does is that he basically brings destruction. He brings anger, depression, anxiety. And that was like after that, exactly what I was dealing with. Wow. So let me tell you the whole, the whole story. So they basically, we did a ritual. They consecrated me to this demon. They gave me a coin because a coin is a sign of covenant, an object. Mm. This is why you need to be careful with the things that you bring inside your Come house. On. If you have that witchcraft in your house, let me tell you something. It's time for you to remove all of those things related with occultism, dream cultures, crystals. You don't need any of that stuff in your house. Okay. So I have this coin that represented the covenant with this demon. Right. So he became my spirit guy. So even witches have a spirit guide. Mm. Let me tell you that. I'm just trying to show you the similarities Good. between this side and this side. Right. So he became my spirit guy. I could ask him for things. Uh, he will help me. But what happened was that this, this witch now was turning. Uh, she was like kind of like turning me and or, or helping me to be to move in black witchcraft. Right. And because I had so much anger. And, and hate, I was becoming like, you know, black. I was uh, starting to get involved in black witchcraft. I started to astro project. I started to, my, 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 suddenly what I have learned now, it was turning into, into dark. So this uh, spirit guy, this demon, I could hear him. I could uh, smell him. I could see him every time that I needed something. He wow. will call, he will call. But let me tell you something will happen with demons is that they need blood in order to increase the power mm. and for you in order also to increase the power there has to be a, there, there has to be a sacrifice there wow. has to be blood 
right? So this is why we have the blood of Jesus. And this is why many Christians are walking in destruction and in yep. poverty and in all of these things because they don't understand the power of the blood of Jesus, right? And so what happened is that if you don't give them what you want, they start to torment you with like suicide. And I started to cut myself because wow. that's blood, right? Wow. So. So um, we started to, to do rituals in the house. We started to do ceremonies in the house. I never like to speak about what, what type of rituals because people, I don't want people to know yeah. what's the name of this ritual or what is it specifically. I just want people to know that this is real, that I came yeah. out of that and I'm free now, right? So I don't want to make emphasis in that, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we did different rituals. Uh, 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 calling demons, uh, a lot of black stuff in that house. And what happened was that we started to open a portal for death, destruction, anxiety, and suicide, all of that happening in our, in our, in our house. Mm. I started also to try to commit suicide because I was being tormented. I, I just wanted to, to, to die. So I started to cut my, my, uh, my veins without realizing that what I was doing was a blood sacrifice mm. for this demon, right? Wow. And then what happened was that, so this is really interesting because remember, I didn't know anything about Christianity. I knew that some members of my family, we used to read the Bible because some a type of witchcraft they also use the bible yes they which understand. is so crazy yeah go ahead <laughs> it is so we used to believe in psalms 23 and psalms 91 to the point that when my dad died that's all we keep repeating and i memorized psalm 23 and psalm 91 and i wasn't even christian right oh. so there are certain bible verses that you know they understand that there is that there that there is power and they use and people might might say what well, why why how is that possible there is something there that there is power and they grab those words and they and they start to declare those words so what happened was that one week before my dad died so this is where, where things start to get intense right what happened was that i had a dream I have been always a dreamer, but this dream in particular, I didn't understand until I became Christian. I dreamed that these black birds related to death, I always forget the name of them. Crow. They came, it's a crow, yeah. They came into my room and they were trying to attack me. But what mm. happened was that my dad came, he opened his hands and these birds started to hurt his head and I wake up from the dream. So what happened was that we did a ritual. I will tell you guys after I share with you this, what the dream means. We did a ritual as many other times at the entrance of our house. We sit in a circle because circle means unity. And this is something that I understand how, you know, witches and satanists, they understand unity. They wow. are so organized. They understand ranks. They understand, you know, how things work. And then we have the church of Christ divided, the church of Christ fighting for positions and the, and the, and the, and the church of Christ, like just going in circles and fighting. And it's like, what guys are you doing? There is a spiritual warfare. There is a war in the spirit and you guys are wasting your time bringing division Come and, on. you know, coming against the name of Jesus because by you doing those things you are kind of like insulting Jesus and what yeah. he did in the cross for you so we sit and this is something that you know when Christians are praying in circle grabbing their hands that's powerful because yeah. that circle means unity right mm. so we sit right there in circle and we started to pray in tongues so this is when people start saying, oh, uh, Christians, they speak in tongues as witchcraft. That is not witchcraft. That was given to us. Come and what on. happened was that now the enemy is grabbing it. And now the enemy, that's why the enemy is gaining so much power and is advancing his kingdom because the church is sleeping. Because the, 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 the church are calling what is good, bad, and what is bad, good. Come and this on. is something that I don't understand. So we were sitting in there speaking in tongues because we knew that by speaking in tongues, we could also access the spiritual realm, right? Demonic so tongues, we were right? There. You're speaking in demonic yes, tongues. Okay, yes, yes, okay, gotcha. sorry, sorry, no, no, yes, no, it's good, to make it's it clear. <laughs> demonic tongues. So we were there. This is why, let me tell you something. When I became Christian, I struggled so much with tongues 
because mm. I keep thinking that it was witchcraft. Wow. I, 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 and it was until maybe like three, four years ago that, you know, that broke in me because I didn't want to do witchcraft. So I keep saying, Holy Spirit, I think this is witchcraft. I don't want to do it. I don't want to open my mouth. And so anyway, so we did that circle. We started to speak in tongues. And this black witch, the main one, she, uh, a demon came, it started to speak through her. And she started to give kind of like prophecies to all of us, right? And then what happened was that she, she looked at my mom and she told my mom, someone in your family, even her voice changed, everything changed. She told my mom, someone in your family is going to die in one week. So wow. she released a declaration of death. This is why words are so important. If we knew what we know now, we will have come against that. We will yeah. probably break that in the name of Jesus, anoint, re like reverse all of that. But we didn't, we didn't know. So what happened was that my mom started to cry and this demon started to ask, do you want to know who? Do you want, want, want to know who? And I look at my mom and I told her, I don't want to know because if it's me, I don't want to wow. know. Gonna... <laughs> so we closed the session and I remember because there were like so many arguments in our house the this black witch told me you would want to come to live with me for a season so i was already living in her house she was already like training me teaching me all the more things such projection a lot of things courses on people all of all of that stuff and what happened was that one week later exactly on a sunday on the 20 28th of september 2000 and 2008 i think it was my mom called this black witch at five in the morning and she said to her, come quick because something happened. She, the, the witch didn't want, want to tell me. All the way to our house, she had a smile on her face. So I was thinking maybe they had an argument. You know, they've been arguing. There's been a lot of stuff in the house. As soon as I arrived in the house, my mom was outside with my little brother. He is 16 now. He was two by that point. And my mom was like crying. She was like shocked. She couldn't even speak. She, it was just awful. So I got concerned and I was like, something happened. So I went inside the house. As soon as I went inside the house, there was this black cloth, like, you know, this heaviness when you enter into a place and you know, whoa, what is this? And suddenly something pushed me down and I knew something happened because of the atmosphere that was moving in that, in that, in that place. I saw the light in my parents' room uh, on, so I went there. My dad wasn't there. And suddenly, I had the feeling to go into the storage that we had next to the house. So I ran outside. I knew what I was going to find there. So I kind of like pushed the door, and I saw my dad there, and he just committed suicide. No. He hung his there. He left a note, and obviously, as I saw my dad there, I entered into, you know, anxiety, attack, crying. Obviously, my relationship with my mom was always bad. We never had, even though we were doing Sanchez witchcraft and all of these things, I used to hate her. Let me tell you that. I used to hate wow. her. We didn't have wow. a good relationship. We, did, we used to fight. We used to, I used to just, like, you know, put spells on her to, like, to kill her. It was just crazy, right? So then the only man that loved me, that I thought I loved me, that protected me, now it was gone. Wow. So that for me, I entered into a lot of rejection, anger. I became even darker there. I became even like, why this happened? And you know what happened when my dad died? Do you remember the witch that was in Colombia, right? Yeah. Out of nowhere, she called my mom and she told her, I tried to astro, astro project into your house to see what is going on because I'm concerned. She said, there was this black cloth around your house. Some, someone of high rank has came into your house and I know that your husband has died. That's what she wow. said. I know that he has died. And she told my mom, let me tell you something. I told you about the black witch. She didn't come with good intentions. She, she was trying to destroy the family to kill you guys. And now she, because she was jealous of what we as a family, we were carrying, right? So my mom obviously told uh, the woman this happened he committed suicide let me tell you something that black witch until that happened she disappears she left we didn't know any anything about her she completely disappeared wow. out of the picture right and now 
I entered into this battle with this demon, with all of this anger, with all of this rejection. I left my mom. I left the house. I started to drink. I started to I still try to commit suicide. My dreams, this demon was coming to try to get me. I got a boyfriend by that point. And because he was the only thing that I had, I was doing witchcraft on him because I knew I don't want to lose him. And I knew everything that we used to break, I knew he's going to come back because I'm doing witchcraft. I have the power. He's coming back. So I knew that he is coming back, right? So I went through all the process of hate, of anger, of rejection, of witchcraft, of doing witchcraft on people, on hating everything, hating my life, trying to commit suicide, blood sacrifices, all of that stuff. And then one day, this is when I met Jesus. Did you work Come with on. Now? Come on. <laughs> so good. Yeah, go into it. So good. But Jesus. And I remember, I remember one day we, um, I went to visit my mom in Spain to Benidorm because I was living in a And how old were you at this area. point? How huh? old were you? How old were you at this point when you? 19. Okay. So um, what happened was that we went to a church and this church, they were giving prophecies. Remember, because we come from the occultism, and so we were interested in prophecies in the future, in yeah, what are yeah. the people saying? So as someone took us there and they started to give us a prophecy to me, my brother and my cousin that we will be moving to London, that we will be studying. And my mom said like, oh, this is not like witchcraft. Why are they saying the same stuff to all of them? That's not how it works. So she got angry and we left the church. But what happened, I moved to my city, I came back. And what happened was that I started to feel like this desire in me, like, hmm, what about if there is something called prophecy? What about if, if people can prophesy and what, what they prophesy was true? And, you know, funny, uh, the story ends in one year later, I moved to London. I, you know, I studied English. So everything that they were prophesying over our wow. lives became true. So I started to have that feeling of like, okay, maybe there is something more, maybe. And I was so lost that I just remember like just being desperate and I was living with someone and she wasn't even Christian. She wasn't even anything. I told her, do you know of any churches, but no Catholic churches because I come from Catholicism and I, it's boring. I want something yeah. different. And she told me there is a church in the next city. You might like it. So I went there to that church with so much expectation. I went like, you know, when a little kid is going for the first time to, yeah. I don't know, to yeah. Legoland or to these places and you are, you are like, what is going to happen, right? So I went there into that church. It was a really small church and the apostle of the house, when he saw me that as soon as I stepped into the atmosphere, I started to shake. Mm. And, you know, I didn't have a crazy deliverance right there manifesting, vomiting, but, you know, and this man came and he hugged me and I haven't felt a love like that in my life. And I started to cry and to shake. And suddenly something in me felt different. Mm. I felt love and I couldn't stop shaking. And I keep saying, what is this feeling? Why am I shaking? Why am I crying? Why I feel loved? What, what is this feeling? And I got so addictive to that presence that even though the city was far from me, I keep going twice per week to that place for that encounter with the Holy Spirit. And every time, let me tell you something, every time that I went to the church, every, as soon as I crossed in, the presence would follow me. I, 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 I couldn't, I would leave that place shaking. And one day I told my friend, I need to take you somewhere. And we, need, we, we used to go out together, get drunk, party, do crazy stuff. And I told her, I want to take you somewhere. I think you are going to like this. <laughs> Listen, as soon as both of us went into that place, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we left that place drunk. Let me tell you, you know, when you are drunk, Come drunk, on. we couldn't even move. We were like grabbing hands, shaking in the street. And now she became Christian, she married, she had children. So that fire that, you know, that I was feeling that hunger, now I was passing it to my, to my, to my, to my, to my friends. And so after that, I, I, I keep looking for preachings and, you know, Benny him and all of these different preachers that I was encountering. 
and I was so hungry. And then I moved to London. My mom moved to London. But remember, apart from my aunt, when I was young, I was the first one in my family to become Christian. Wow. That's so I incredible. kept having dreams. I kept having dreams that my mom would be that my mom that the enemy will use my mom to shut me down. So mm. I knew that as soon as I move in with my mom to London, the enemy will come for me. And it was exactly like that. I started to again to try to commit suicide. Why? Because even though I was Christian, so this is where I come from. Look, even though I was Christian, even though I had an encounter with Jesus, there were still legal rights around us that we didn't break. There was still a consecration. There was still iniquities. There was still courses that we didn't come against. We didn't uh, repent for that. We didn't renounce. There was still things around. So the Lord and the Holy Spirit allowed me to feel his power and his love to bring me closer to him. And then I entered into a process of deliverance. So come I on. remember that was the last time I tried to commit suicide. And I remember now I knew if I call upon the name of Jesus, he's going to come and rescue me. So as I was bleeding on the floor, I just started to scream, Jesus, so strong inside of me. Like, I can't do this anymore. Jesus, come to me. Wow. Suddenly, someone knocked at the door and there was a Christian lady. She came inside the house and I went downstairs and she introduced me to this uh, young impact for young people. And I just started to go every sa sa uh, sa Saturday and I just started to have now um, mentors but this time they were prophets and it was how curious how when I was in darkness I had witches training me wow. as soon as I became Christian now I had prophets training me and let me tell you something witches are prophets witches yeah. are prophets and the enemy has now taken them for darkness to yep. use them for their own purpose when in reality they have been called to be the mouth of God and Come to on. be prophets and to expand his kingdom. So I started to go to this place, but now the battle in my house with my mom. So remember, I was really young, but what did I do? I started to fast for my mom every week. I was praying for her. I was repenting. I didn't even know anything about deliverance. But you know, something that I did as soon as I became Christian, I wanted to know about demonology. I started to read about all of these demons and the Holy Spirit told me, no, you already come from that. You now need to focus on me, in the Holy Spirit, in wow. falling in love with me and with my presence. So it was like this book of demonology and all of this darkness shut down for me for 10 years. Wow. And in all of this process of 10 years, all I did was a deliverance all i did was knowing the holy spirit how important is the holy spirit how everything has to be based on the holy spirit the power of the blood of jesus the power of the testimony and something that i didn't do was i never share my background with anyone wow and even wow. like until last year the testimony yeah, last year was my so first for 10 interview. years you didn't even share your testimony last year was the first year you okay. shared it I was feeling ashamed. It was like a mark in my life that I always I share my dad committed suicide, but I never say what happened to us, wow. where we come from, because I was feeling ashamed. So the enemy was bringing that into my life to make me feel like embarrassed of what the Lord did in my life. And it wasn't until last year with my spiritual father in an interview uh, in Rick Nation. And we did the, in, the interview on casting out demons and I shared a little bit of my testimony. And then in January with Jennifer, I shared, she contacted me out of nowhere. And that was the first time that I shared in the, my testimony. So for all wow. these years, I never shared with anyone, even like until recently, people are messaging me. Oh, I have known you for all these years and I didn't know that you were dealing with this and you were struggling with this. But now I know that by the power of the testimony. Every time that I go, I know that, Lord, if you allow me to share my testimony, and recently, let me tell you something. There was a person that she was a witch, and she contacted me before I came to the UK, and she said, I think I had an encounter with God. Can I please talk, talk to you? And I was like, oh my Lord, is this fake? Is this, is, this, yeah. is this real? So I called her, and she was crying. She had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So I guide her through a prayer of repentance, a, pr a prayer of deliverance. She accepted Jesus. And after a few hours, she sent me 
a video of her throwing away all her karata readings, all her things. And I was just there crying like, Lord, you allow me to, to see this. And I was just crying with her because God is so good. Anyway, I got lost. <laughs> so good. No, it's so, so good. One thing that I, in your testimony, it's so this is like your third time really on this type of platform sharing your testimony then. Yeah, that's incredible. And I was thinking about when you were talking about you're this young kid, you're dedicated to darkness, to witchcraft. And then look at you today. You're on this platform. There's 5,500 people watching and you're exposing the works of the darkness, preaching the gospel after all these times of, of almost or trying to commit suicide. And then I, if I got that right, your last time was as you were trying to commit suicide, the lady knocked on your door and you have this radical encounter. And there's many people watching. You guys think you're too far from God. And I'm going like, look at my testimony. Look at your testimony of all that God has brought you out of and all that you're doing. And then one thing I wanted to point out is you were saying, how witchcraft is a counterfeit of the real, right? They're doing blood sacrifices because Christ's blood is the ultimate sacrifices. They're speaking in tongues. Come and on. that's because the, we speak in tongues as believers. They're yes. giving a counterfeit prophecy. We give real Ooh. prophecy. And this is one thing that people that go to mediums and psychics and fortune tellers and tarot card readers, they don't realize that they're allowing witches to speak their destiny. Like I have people say, mm -hmm. I went to a medium and she said, oh, in three months, you're going to get in a car accident. And then I got in a car accident. It wasn't necessarily that she knew the future is that she spoke death in your future. Like you're yeah. letting her speak these things over you. And even I'll go as far to say there's many believers that watch demonic movies. They watch all these movies now have witchcraft, have sorcery, and they're speaking all this death. And Christians watch this and don't realize they're allowing this into their homes. You're, they're allowing this into their lives. And as you said, one thing I was thinking about is how your house was so important, right? The witches would come into your house. You guys were doing rituals at your house. There's something about your home that there is power there. And I think there's many people watching that think it's okay to bring things into my home. It's okay to bring items in. It's okay to watch certain things. Friend, you got to be careful what you're watching in your home. That TV is a supernatural portal and you're allowing mm -hmm. these spirits into your house, not realizing that your house is supposed to be a sacred place. I, I remember when I got saved, God told me, get rid of everything in your house that's not Ooh. of me. And so I took all my TVs, all my video games, every movie of my brothers, my sisters, my parents, I put them all out in this outside garage because the Holy Spirit told me I'm gonna dwell in your home and I can't dwell where there's unholy items. And some people listening right now say, that's absolutely crazy, I would never do that, <laughs> but, you'd never do that and you're not seeing revival. See, so there's hey. many people that don't realize they're not willing to do these crazy next level things, but they're not seeing the move of God because God requires that level of sacrifice, that level of commitment. And so I wanted to also touch on something in your testimony. You talk about, and this is something I've always thought about, Julie, is witches healing people. Witches, there's witches that do exorcisms, right? And they do, oh, we're going to cast out a demon. Or they say, like, we're going to cast out an unclean entity, they say. Or we're going to heal people. Or we're going to do, like, white magic. What is the benefit of a witch? I'll tell you what I think about it, and you tell me what you think. But yeah. I've always thought that witches will do, say, healings, or they'll do whatever it could be, like, like say somebody can't have a baby and they go to the witch doctor and then all of a sudden they have a baby. In my mind, the devil will allow some of these things to happen or do some of these things to get people to think that witchcraft works, that witchcraft is the way to life, to health. So he tricks them and that's how he gets them to have faith in witchcraft and the occult. What is your thought on witches, mm. like you were saying, that are healing, like your grandma, right? She was healing people. Yeah. She was doing all these things. Why is it that that's even the case? So this is what basically I learned seeing that from my great grandmother because she used to move also like in healings. And what happened is that the witches, they can take away a certain problem. But what happened is that they, eh, 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 another problem bring comes mm. without the person knowing. So you were saying a person that can have children, right? So they go to the witch and the, what happened is that this witch is going to kind of like do certain things for the, this person to have a child. And what happened is that the witch, the demon that is causing the barrenness, the person, the woman not being able to have children, this witch will come against that and demons will obey and allow wow. her to give birth. But wow. what happened is that the magic brings a sickness instead so that this person will always keep coming back to the witch with more problems, with more problems and looking for more solutions. So it's not actually that they are healing. 
is that like they are giving you something, but in return they are giving like you know they are asking for something else. So let's say for an instance that someone couldn't have children, they go to a witch. Now they can have children. Now the baby might be born with infirmities mm. or involved in gr- in drugs and in all of these diff- different things. So it's not that they are actually healing, but because they move with demons around, you know, the demons that cause this certain. A, a infertility you know they can be removed for a season but also bring something worse so in reality what they are doing is kind of like opening more portals to the enemy in that in that area yeah and there's people that think oh, okay so i'm gonna go to a witch and i've seen this you can see this on tv they go and they blow sage and smoke all through the house to try to remove entities but what they don't realize is they may be moving some demons out but they're moving other demons in oh, and that yes. and that's the thing is you guys have to realize when you're talking about witches and witchcraft is these people are using demons to gain information they're using demons to do their spells and do their stuff and so they have control over the demons in people so they might say well i went to a witch because i was whatever depressed or at anxiety and it went away but yeah you also like you said you have five other things that those demons came in and really the end of the road when and i want to just give this warning to everybody watching because there's people watching in here that say oh i'm practicing witchcraft i'm doing it right now and this is gonna this video will literally bring people out of witchcraft bring people out of satanism this is the devil's goal to use you then to toss you to the side so when he's done with your two-year plan or five-year plan or mm. whatever it is he'll get you to kill yourself he'll get you to yeah. kill other people he'll get you to he, he could care less about you so once he's done using you he tosses you to the side because he's that he's that hireling he's the you know he rents the house he doesn't buy it he doesn't take care of it what god does is god says i'm going to take you in when the devil throws you out and you're beat down and broken i'm going to heal you i'm going to deliver you for the rest of your life god is a god that says i want to do this for the rest of your life i want to give you children i want to give you peace i want to give you joy so i just want to tell somebody right here prophetically that's in witchcraft right now watching that the devil is a user and he's a loser. He wants to use you. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't love you. There's there's people watching right now that have demons that think they think the demons love them, right? The demon told them, well, I love you. I care about you. I want to be married to you. And people have relationships as you did. I mean, you had a relationship with that principality and you gain relationship and trust with them. But but ultimately, every one of them have the same goal. And that goal is to still kill and to destroy. And so I want to warn many of you that think this is all fun and games. You think it's no big deal. Oh, I'm just playing Ouija board. It's all fun and games until you can't get the demon to leave you. It's all fun and games oh. until that you're cutting yourself as Julie was was sacrificing blood to those demons as the man at the tombs the bible says was cutting himself with rocks those demons are blood thirsty they need that blood for pa- for the power source and many of you guys watching think it's innocent and I want to really challenge you. Let me just, let's go into, I know we've been going here for a while. Such good stuff. Seriously, one of the most powerful testimonies I've ever heard in my life. You're inc- you're incredible at communicating it, whether you think this or not. You're incredible at communicating these truths and communicating the fact that the devil is continuing to counterfeit. And we as the church, we need to pursue the real. We need to go after deliverance. We need to pursue prophecy. The Bible says don't despise prophecy, but mm. to pursue it, to pursue speaking in tongues, to pursue the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I want to challenge many of you to pursue the real authentic don't be scared of it i know a lot of people come out of the occult and now they're afraid of getting into the spiritual gifts yeah. as you said you were but no pursue these things this is what god has designed the devil has stolen the devil has perverted but god has designed it okay julie so now you're a christian you're saved you're now doing deliverance you told me earlier that you were on the deliverance map you've done over a hundred in-person deliverance talk a little bit about what was your first encounter with deliverance what was the first time you got into it because i know you said for like years you weren't really that involved in the supernatural you were kind of like you know weren't sharing your testimony when did you get into casting out demons how did you get learn about it you started doing it you've done you know now over 100 one-on-one deliverances talk to us a little bit about some of the deliverances you've done and, and how you got involved with this so let me let me let me finish by sharing this part of the testimony that is also related with the with deliverance so what happened in these 10 years right I have been experiencing different type of deliverance in myself. So this is when the Lord started to talk to me about iniquities, about covenants, about all of these mm. things. So I'm teaching deliverance based on my testimony and you can see my fruits. You can see what the Lord has done in me, in my mom. You know, my mom now is a pastor. She Come was delivered. She, she was a yes. free. So when I used to, when I used to pray to God, God deliver my, my, my mom, 
He gave me more of what I was asking for. Now she runs a deliverance ministry in Spanish. She she went, she used to go all around Europe doing deliverances. Now she's moving with me to Colombia. We are going to be working together in here. So see, you know, never stop praying and fasting for that person because, so you know, good. your prayers and your fasting is not going to fall on the ground. Okay. So what happened was that to end with this. So I became Christian, all of that stuff. I came to London and... I, I have now these prophets training me, you know, in, di in different areas. And remember, I was, I was Christian by now, right? So I met my husband, I got pregnant, and I never shared with him about my testimony. Remember, I was ashamed. I used wow. to hate my past. He didn't know anything about witchcraft, anything. All he knew was that, was that my dad committed suicide and that's it. One day he came when I was pregnant with my firstborn and he told me, I have a dream. And I was like, okay, tell me. He told me. And an indigenous, like a weird thing in the dream. Remember this uh, Wakaipuro, this principality, the, it, it dresses as a, how do you call it, indigenous? Is yeah, that yeah, like an indigenous remember? person, yeah. yeah, like tribal or. Yeah, yes. He told me like this indigenous came to my dream and he started to ask me for permission to come to you. And wow. I told him like, no, no, no. And I was like, what? And I told him, how does it look like? Like, tell me how he started to explain to me. And I sat with him. I remember we were in a, in a, in a park and I shared with him my testimony. I told him I was, you know, I was a, a given to this, to this. I explained to him the whole thing. And now I called my mom. Now my mom was Christian. She was starting to do deliverance in, in herself, in me. And I told her, I think this demon is still around. I used to, I still as a Christian, feel this demon coming, closing the doors, mm. touching my legs. And I didn't know how to get rid of that. Like, I'm like, God, I'm Christian now. I'm pregnant I can't share with this with anyone because I'm going to feel like people are going to call me crazy. So I was battling with all of that. And what happened? I told my mom and my mom told me, do you still have the, the gold coin? And I was like, I remember the covenant, the object that I had with this demon. Now, wow. because the demons understand authority. So now my husband was my authority. So now wow. be before he came to my mom and to my father to gain access to me, right? Now, because my husband became now my authority, we became one flesh. Now he's my authority. He was coming to my husband asking for permission to come to me. So what happened was that we throw the, the, the coin, the object. We started to break covenants. We started to, you know, detach myself from that spirit, attaching myself to the Holy Spirit. So that's when we are starting to learn about deliverance and about, wow, even though you are a Christian, but you can be a still come be, on. you know, a, a, a demons come and chase you in dreams and touch you and do things on you. Why? Because there are legal rights. So you need yep. to ask yourself what type of legal, or legal rights the enemy has in your life. Maybe something that you give him access to. Maybe it's through generational courses of iniquities. Maybe it's because you watch something. Or maybe it's because you committed fornication. You became one flesh with the person. And now you are channeling all those demons. And this is why, so careful, guys, like having sex before yep. you yep. get married yep. it's not like oh you're being legalistic oh you cannot watch that thing because you're being legalistic i always say this what type of consecration do you want to reach how deep in the spirit do you want to go with the holy spirit right it's up wow. it's up to you and when you are fornicating with someone else let me tell you something you become one flesh right one piece of your soul goes to this person and yes. this person goes to you because the soul is defragmented the Defragmented, I think it's called in yeah, English, yeah. right? And what happened is that it creates a filter. So all the demons that this person has now pass to you. And, you know, there is there a mix of demons. And this is why I have so many people coming saying, I don't know why I'm dealing with suicide. And then I ask them, have you had sex? And they say, yes, I did. And we identify that the person that they have sex with was dealing with suicide thoughts with depression mm. so now these demons are attached to them and they are dealing with the same thing until they don't repent they don't break those things and they close the door the person is not set free so this is why you know be careful and 
I got lost again, guys. Sorry. So, <laughs> so much stuff in my mind. No, it's so good. And then, oh, yeah. So that's basically how, um, like, we got a free and deliverance. That's when I started to have, like, heart deliverance of, you know, vomiting. These demons, like, chasing me. And But the Lord, in all that way, he manifested. He, he guided me. He helped me. I wasn't doing deliverance on people. But I believe that my first platform was the street. Me and my son, my, my two-year-old, he was he is seven now. We used to go to the street, give food to homeless, pray for the homeless, and prophesy to the homeless. People in the street used to call me a witch with, wow. because I used to give like word of knowledge. And I used to be scared of that, like, Lord, am I praying? Am I moving in witchcraft? What, what is this? What is happening? Until uh, my next leader, he, he confirmed to me, like, you know, you have a prophetic mantle. The Lord has called you, you know, to be a prophet. I never call myself a prophet. This is what the Lord has called me to do. A lot of people say, oh, you are calling yourself a prophet. No, I will never say, hey, my name is Prophet Julie Lopez. I say, my name is Julie Lopez, but I know who I am in Christ. This is what the Lord has called me to be. And I don't care what people say. This is who I am. And now I know that the Lord has called me to do this. So that's how I started. And then how I started in deliverance. So after the process, right, I joined Rick Nation with my spiritual father, an amazing man of uh, God, and he started to train me into the prophetic, right? So he started to like teach me now. I went into a different level in the prophetic through prophecies. He started to train me, uh, you know, how to give prophecies, how to be careful with certain things. So I went also through a process of deliverance with, with, uh, with him. And then when I graduated from the School of the Prophets and Apostles that uh, he has dearly, uh, his spiritual mom, Dr. Sharon Stone, he gave me a prophecy of deliverance. And wow. I was already having this thing in my, in my heart, like, oh, deliverance. Like, so many people I bind by iniquities by this. And the Lord has set me free from this. Lord, use me in this area. I want to help as many people as possible. As soon as she gave me that prophecy, I activated what she released to me. Because this is why some, many of you you don't see your prophecies come to pass because you are sitting there waiting for your prophecy come to come on. to pass. Sometimes you have to activate the come prophecy on. that was given to you. So what I did after that prophecy, I found you, I went to your deliverance map, and I started come to on. put myself in Spain, in Colombia, in the, in the UK. I told my husband, create for me a website, let's do one-to-one -one deliverance. I don't know, I don't even know uh, what, how is this going to be done, but I had so much hunger and the Lord was setting me free. And I just started to do one on one deliverance every single day. Sometimes it will take me three, four hours, Come five on, hours. Say it, say but it. I learned in the process how to be effective and partnering with the Holy Spirit. That is so important. You partner with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will show you this and this and this. And now I realized now after after like eight months, I was I was I, I was tired and I was telling the Holy Spirit, how can I reach more people? How can I not just do one-on-ones? Like, teach me, show me, how can I do this? And he told me, you're going to open a mentorship program and you're going to start teaching about what I have shown you over the past few years that I have been taking notes and you are going to be going in deep into these areas. So I opened a mentorship program and in last November, then now I actually closed today so, pe so people can join because now I am in a different mission now. And, you know, over this time, over 2,000 people joined. Wow. Uh, I did, like, massive deli deliverance on Zoom, a lot of testimonies. So that's kind of, like, how um, I started. And that's when the Holy Spirit gave me green light. Now you can learn about demonology. Now you can go deeper in, into these things because now you are ready. You have a foundation, which is the Holy Spirit. You are not going to mix things. And that's why I – this is why – let me tell you something. When a lot of people come to me and they say, like, I need deliverance from the spirit of mermaid and they start naming all these demons. And I'm like, are you actually learning about all, all of these demons instead of like learning about the, come whole, on, the Holy Spirit? Come on, come on, go <laughs> the there. The foundation, the foundation yeah. of everything is the Holy Spirit for deliverance, for the prophetic, for prophetic acts. Everything should be guided by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit should be your foundation. So that's how I started.
That's so good. I love how you said that for a couple years, God wasn't letting you learn about demonology or demons or spiritual warfare because he wanted your foundation to be on the Holy Spirit, on Jesus. And that is such a good word for everybody watching here because here's the bottom line, okay? There's a lot of you watching. You would not be watching this if it was about prayer. Like that's just the bottom line. You wouldn't be watching yeah. this if it was about fasting. You wouldn't be, the numbers are 5,500 people right now because people are interested in spiritual warfare, supernatural. And that's great. We want you to be here, okay? Don't click off saying fine i'll leave we want you to be here we love that but the question also has to be do you know basic doctrine do you know basic theology do you know basic principles of salvation right of um prayer of fasting of reading the word because all of this demonology is all good and deliverance is great but it's not a substitute for having a relationship with jesus and i think a lot of people want to be like the sons of skiva like i cast out in the name Ooh. of whom paul preaches about like i cast out in the name of whom isaiah preaches about but they don't want true relationship which takes effort and time and energy and focus so i would challenge a lot of you watching that all you care about is demons and casting out demons and deliverance and all that to not only care about that, but also care about what does my prayer life look like? What does my intimacy with Christ look like? What does my fasting look like? How much time am I spending in the word? How much time am I spending fasting? These are all important things to know. And and then I, I wanna just point out this, Julie, you say you went and got on the map, made a website, started just doing the work. And that's such a word for us tonight is, man, we spend so much time thinking one day that word's going to come to pass. One day I'm going to be this deliverance guy. One day I'm going to cast out demons instead of saying, no, I'm actually going to go apply to be on the map. I'm actually going to go out to the street. I'm actually going to go make a website. I'm going to go learn how to do this, do that. God's not going to do it for you guys. God is the helper, Ooh. not the doer. The Holy Spirit's the helper. So he helps us do the work. He's the co-worker. He's the great co-mission. We're on a mission with him. But for many of you tonight, God is challenging you saying it's time for you to step out and do the work. Julie, what an incredible, incredible testimony. I will say this with everybody watching. This will not be hopefully the last time that you're on the broadcast. I would love to have you on again. Maybe next time we can do some teaching, talking about deliverance, talking about, oh, I know awesome. there's a lot that you could share on that, but I would love you. I want, I would love for you. And I want to respect your time, but I would love for you to pray with the chat, pray with everybody watching. I know we've been going for about an hour and a half here. I would love just to pray a prayer of deliverance, a prayer of freedom. Hey, maybe there's somebody watching Julie that's in the occult. Maybe there's somebody watching in witchcraft. Maybe there's a house right now that has curses on it that has witchcraft in it i would just love for you to pray let's just break those things let's just let's just see freedom and deliverance right now if you don't mind doing that that would be awesome just to pray for the chat let me let me let me finish with this and is yeah. that the 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 deepest of your deliverance is the deepest of your repentance Mm. So is deliverance is connected to repentance, is connected to also to forgiving because some demons attach to unforgiveness. So maybe what you are dealing with is because you are you haven't detached yourself from that person, you haven't forgiven because you are living in sin, because you wow. are allowing these things to come inside your house. So I say something, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't like to waste my time. Come right. On. So I don't like to come and people help me, help me. Yes, I help you. Yes, I pray for you and I don't want to answer you, but don't come to me again and tell me I need prayers. And then I see you in different chats asking for deliverance, asking for, eh, eh, eh. Listen, the Holy Spirit, deliverance is the bread of the yes. children. Okay. You shouldn't be begging for deliverance to anyone. You should be begging to the Holy Spirit. He is the only one that you should be come going on. to. And also, we are here to help you, but you guys need to do your, your part. This is yes. a teamwork, and it's not just about a lot of ministers giving and giving and giving, and you guys like just receiving and receiving and just being there like these animals that suck everything and they don't keep Come anything on. in return. Okay? So, but I just want us to pray right now, and I believe that as we are praying, I want you to invite the Holy Spirit, even if you just you know, came in here as, as you know, and you are involved in the occultism because you wanted to see what this is. Let me tell you something, you know, my Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever the same Jesus that was on the cross came to Come rescue on. me, now he's coming to rescue you. So just all you have to do is just open your heart to him and just surrender all. And I know that a lot of people that come from the occultism, they start saying, oh, I'm going to lose my power. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. But let me tell you something, there's nothing more beautiful than surrender to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to take control over your life. 
Let me tell you just that. What I found in Jesus, in Christ, and with the Holy Spirit, I haven't found it anywhere Come else. On. And I know that things sometimes might get like crazy, but I know like, you know what, God, I know that, you know, if I'm under your will, I have everything. If I have the Holy Spirit, I have everything. If I don't have the Holy Spirit, I have nothing. I feel lost. I feel empty. So this is why the Holy Spirit should be important in our lives. So, Father, we just give you thanks, Father, for this time. Father, thank you, Father, for everyone, Father, that is watching live, for everyone, Father, that is going to come, Father, later on to watch this live. And I just, Father, declare right now, Father, an atmosphere of freedom. I just ask you, Lord, that you remove every veil that's been, Father, and, and stopping their spiritual senses, their spiritual eyes, Father, from seeing you, everything that has been stopping, Father, their spiritual ears. We just remove those blockages right now. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, we break, Father, the veil that the enemy has been trying to put in their life. We break the veil, Father, that the enemy has been trying to bring in their houses. And I just declare, Father, right now, would you, Holy Spirit, would you shake and remove every darkness in their life? I just declare right now that you are going, Father, to expose the darkness in their life, Father, but no for condemnation, but for redemption, Father, right now. I just give you thanks for what you are doing, Father, and I just come against, Father, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of depression, every spirit of anxiety, and I just command them to leave, Father, yes, right yes. now in Jesus' mighty name. I even see someone in here. There is a is a woman in here that has here like a like a like a ball in here, and the decree of the doctor has been cancer. But Father, with the authority that you have given me, Father, I reverse that decree, and I made Father right now a bigger decree, declaring Father healing. I drive Father every infirmity, every every cancer, Father, and I command every spirit of infirmity, every spirit that has been attached, Father, to her bloodline, Father, right now to live right now. We remove the power. We remove, Father, those decrees right now in Jesus' name. And by the blood of Jesus, we just declare, Father, healing. And I just declare, Father, right now, Father, that everyone that's watching, Father, right now, that is spiritual senses, Father, to be activated right now. Their dreams, ambitions, Father, being activated right now in Jesus' name. I just declare, Father, supernatural encounters, Father, and those of them that have been hungry for your presence, that have been hungry, Father, to know more of you, I just declare, Holy Spirit, that you will visit, visit them, Father, even in dreams, that you will give them even supernatural encounters. And I just give you thanks, Father, for the army that you are raising, Father, in this hour, for the army, Father, that you are raising, Father, in this hour. Thank you for the army. I see an army raising up. Yes. Army that moves in deliverance, that, move, that they don't have excuses, that they don't have rules, that they are just going to be guided by the Holy Spirit and go into the enemy's camp. Thank you, Father. I come against every retaliation, every counterattack, every premature death, every accident, Father, in our lives and in their lives. And I just declare right now, Father, a wall of fire, declaring, Father, that we will leave this earth finish. We won't leave the, this earth, Father, before our time, but we will leave this earth finished. I cover them, Father, right now with the blood of Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, of glory and an honor belongs to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Incredible, incredible. One of the most powerful testimonies I've ever heard. Julie, I definitely know, I know you already know this, but I'm just saying here publicly, God is raising you up as an end time warrior in these last days. I appreciate you, your ministry, what you've done, those that you've helped get set free, you teaching on deliverance. I'm like, I'm in your corner. I'm cheering you on. I want, I want more people <laughs> teaching on it. I want more people preaching about it, training up the church, exposing darkness. I'm so grateful that you were willing to come on this platform and share your testimony. I know you've only shared it once or twice before so it does mean a lot i know it won't be the the last time that you share your testimony and hopefully not the last time you've been on the broadcast before i get you off here is there anywhere that you want to point people they can find you i know i have your youtube channel linked down below is there anything else you'd like to say before i get you off or you'd like to announce that you have any events anything like that so at the moment, as I said, I moved to Colombia with a mission. So this is why kind of like I closed my mentorship program. So the mission is um, to raise 7,000 apostles and prophets in Latin America. So this is why I'm here in Colombia to train people in the prophetic and at, at the same time deliverance. So you can follow me on Instagram. I have also have a website, a Rick Latin website. So you guys can see there all the things that you are, that uh, uh, we are 
we are doing there. So awesome yeah. hey maybe next time we have you on we talk about the prophetic that would be awesome to do a teaching oh yes that. that would be awesome that would be yes. awesome julie thank you so much for being on tonight i'm going to message you after this because i want to bless you as well but thank you so much for being on what an incredible time tonight oh thank you so much for having me and i hope to be back soon yes so we can awesome. cast some demons out <laughs> yes awesome god, god bless, bless you julie you. thank you Bye, have thank a good you. night god bless Bye. What an incredible time tonight, guys. I want to challenge you to sow into this. I want to bless her significantly tonight. You heard what she said. She moved on a mission. She's in Colombia. If you're not, if you haven't given to the broadcast, if you're not a monthly partner, pray about doing that because I do want to bless her. Guys, was that not such an incredible testimony? Listen, we are doing our best to bring on these people every single week to bring on new guests and to share. Last week, we had someone that was a drag queen. This week, we had someone that was in witchcraft and a witch for years. And we're just having all, all of these powerful people come on that are sharing with you guys, pouring into you guys. And so pray about partnering monthly, pray about giving into this so that we can bless these people we bring on. Again, they don't ask for anything. They're giving their time into this for free, but I do feel like it's the right thing to do to bless them. So I'm like, I'm just, man, what an incredible time. I was just getting rocked as she was sharing, exposing the enemy. And I think she did such a good job at sharing about witchcraft, but not going into crazy detail. Like she said, I don't want to go into detail on the spells and all that, because we don't want to spark a curiosity in you guys to go look this stuff up, okay? The reason why we're doing this is so you can come here, learn about it, and get trained in a godly way, and you don't have to go look up, you know, how to do this or how to do that. We don't want you guys getting curious, looking up how to do spells, how to do witchcraft. We want to expose the enemy help people come out of this lifestyle, make you guys realize how real the war is and how real the enemy is. And then we go out, we preach the gospel, we cast out demons, we lay hands on the sick. So incredible guys, 52 people, 50, I think we peaked at 5,500 on live, which is absolutely amazing. If everybody gave a dollar, that would be far above and beyond what we need. So if you would, please pray about sewing, please pray about giving. If you're not a monthly partner, the link's down below. It's on the screen, it's in the comments. Pray about giving monthly to the ministry. We do this every Every week we're on episode 108 if you're new welcome what we do now is we read the donations we thank everybody and then we'll hang out for a little bit here but man what a powerful testimony julie lopez so appreciate her coming on we've been trying to get her on for a couple weeks now i didn't know that this was like only her second or third time sharing her testimony but that's incredible what god is doing i didn't even know she was on the deliverance map until we were in the pre-show getting ready and she said oh i've been on your map i've done over 100 deliverances through your map i had no clue none of that so praise the lord that god's connecting everybody i have this demonic fly in my studio flying around as i'm live here it's driving me crazy so yeah it's a little Beelzebub demon spirit here flying around me as I'm as I'm streaming so weird. Okay, guys Go ahead and give the links to give are there amazing 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 I'm sure you'll see her in Colombia on the deliverance map again as well She's doing teaching in the prophetic maybe next time we'll have her come on and teach in the prophetic God is raising up mighty women of God if you're if you're one of those that says oh women can't teach women can't preach or you follow those kind of guys I'm not that guy. I believe that God can use women uh, Female and male people to preach his gospel and to, and to do the work of the ministry So you're not gonna find here us saying oh women can't teach women can't preach No, God is empowering the next generation to rise up and Julie's in the chat here So you guys can can follow her YouTube there she's there and then it, um, she can post her links as well to Instagram or whatever else make sure that you guys check her out such a powerful testimony such an amazing the way that she told it was awesome 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 I know those people in the chat that are coming out of witchcraft that just got saved and so I know it's gonna be very very fruitful for them and also Christians just incredible to hear the testimony the Bible says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony there is supernatural power when we share our testimonies so thank you Lord okay let me read some of these. Again, I'm gonna be sending her something right when I'm done. I'm gonna be sending her a love offering. So if you guys wanna give into the broadcast, part, a portion of this, part of this uh, offering will be going to her ministry as well so that we can get behind her mission. She's in Colombia. She moved, left everything in the UK on this mission to raise up 7,000 prophets and apostles. Let's get behind it. Let's support what God is doing. Um, let's put our money where our mouth is. Thank you, Priscilla. First one to give tonight. Say, God bless your ministry. We appreciate you, Priscilla. You're a legend. Christina Grays said, thanks Isaiah for all the kingdom you bring i've learned so much may god bless you abundantly thank you so much christina anonymous thank you freddie and priscilla thank you it's a great podcast such a powerful movement against the kingdom of satan may this offering bless you your family and and julie and then a prayer request freddie and priscilla thank you thank you thank you for the generous donation we really appreciate you and guys i will announce this we do have todd white coming on soon and okay you heard it here first i have talked to david lynn he will be coming on the podcast 
hopefully soon. So Todd White, Dave Lynn, we both have lined up, will be coming on hopefully soon. We'll see when. But also, I'm going to bring Dr. Michael Brown on again. We're also going to be doing a Demon Slayer podcast soon. I know we have a lot of stuff that we're working on getting together. But yeah, that's that. And then Friday, we're going to do mass deliverance. So Friday, we'll have a public meeting ID. There will be several thousand people in the Zoom, and we will be maxing out the Zoom call doing mass deliverance on Friday night. So if you need deliverance, if you have a family that does, get on the call on Zoom. We're going to do mass deliverance this Friday night. It'll be public meeting ID. Everybody's going to get in, hopefully. I think last time we maxed out at 2,000. I don't know if I could do more than 2,000. I'm going to contact Zoom. Hopefully, I can get a bigger license, but we'll see. That's going to be Friday night. Jim, thank you, brother. You're a legend, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, Tanya Small. Say beautiful testimony from Julie Lopez. God bless her. Thank you, Tanya Small. Anonymous, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Sarah Moran, I got your prayer request there. Thank you so much, Sarah. Monita Armstrong said, bless you both for a powerful live stream. Thank you, Monita Armstrong. I appreciate you. Virgil Yarbrough, thank you so much. Alvi Silvera, thank you, thank you. Lucas, thank you. Said amazing testimony. Rochelle in Israel said, thank you. Thank you, Rochelle in Israel. Anonymous said to bless you, Julie Lopez. Thank you so much, Anonymous. Anonymous said, God bless you, Isaiah. Jane Whitby, Whitby, Whitby said, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Bella said, God bless you, Julie. Thank you, Bella. And awesome, awesome. Again, what a testimony. What a testimony tonight. Whoo. Thank you, Lord. So amazing. Okay. Deborah Duran, thank you so much. Damien at City. So awesome, awesome. See you at Fresh Start in November. Isaiah Damien, I'll see you there. I'm going to read the chat in a minute, okay, guys? I'm not reading the chat right now. I'm reading donations, and then I'll read the chat. The Zoom info will be on the flyer for Friday. So Friday morning, I'll post the Zoom, and the info will be on the flyer so everybody will get in, okay? Are you Archer? Thank you so much. Sass, thank you. Charity. Rodriguez, said, thanks for sharing your testimony. Julie and Isaiah, please keep me on family prayer. God bless you. Thank you, Charity. Gabriel Mar Marcia said, thank you and Julie. May God continue to increase you both in Jesus' name. Thank you, Gabriel. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I'm bad at pronouncing some of these names. Warren and Donna said that was so good. Thank you. Very powerful. Warren and Donna, thank you. Negretti Armando said thank you. Thank you, Negretti. Lydia Hernandez said God bless you. Thank you, Lydia. Ryan Soul said powerful, powerful stream tonight. Thank you for bringing these powerful men and women of God on the broadcast. Love you, bro. You're a legend. God bless. Thank you, Ryan. You're a legend. I appreciate you. Thank you. Angel de Jesus. Said powerful testimony. May God blessings you both. Thank you. Terrence, thank you. Adrian said this was awesome. She's a blessing. Thank you, Terrence. Gabe said Julie Lopez deliverance message. Thank you, Gabe. Anonymous, thank you. Clint and Terriano. Um said God bless you, Isaiah. I wanted to know: have you ever been called to jury duty? Yes, I have been, but I got out of it. Thank you, Clint. <laughs> I don't know why you asked that, but thank you. Joseph Anthony said great stream. Thank you. Stacy Creighton, thank you. Lorena, thank you. Gabriel and Atilia, thank you. Said Julie was amazing. Bring her back on again. God bless you. We will be bringing her back on again. She was awesome. Really, really awesome. Liliana said, um, Azalini said, I'm sorry. I would love to give more. Thank you, Liliana. Barbara Brown, thank you. Joanne Perala said, what a powerful testimony. It literally knocked me off my feet. I'll go to Jesus. Thank you, Joanne. Me too. I was listening like, wow, this is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Look what God brought her out of. If God can deliver her, save her, and use her, God can do it to you as well. Bezzy said, this was so powerful. Thank you so much to you both. God bless your ministry and being a strong leader in the army. Thank you, Bezzy. Uriel Avalos said, hey, brother, thank you for all you do. We need more Latinos to preach the gospel to our community. Come on, somebody. Hey, I'm half Hispanic, okay? Uriel, thank you. Monica M, thank you, said, love you. Thank you, thank you. Lots of anonymous. Lily, thank you. Uh, lots of anonymous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mimi said, God bless you. This was beautiful. I manifested while Julie was praying. Thank you. Praise the Lord for that deliverance. Maxim said, powerful testimony. Thank you, Maxim. Wow, lots of donations coming in tonight, guys. Alyssa O, oh, thank you. My wife's name is Alyssa. Nice name. Thank you. Uriel said, so thank you, brother and sister. We need more. Okay, I think you gave twice. I don't know if you meant to, Uriel. If you didn't mean to, I could refund one of those. Maria Ramirez, thank you. Anonymous, I got your prayer request for your mom. I will pray for that. Thank you. Okay, let's read the Venmo now as those are coming in on PayPal. Guys, I know a lot of streamers. I don't think any, maybe, am I the only streamer that reads donations? I'm for sure the one that started it. I don't know. But I know a lot of people don't do this. You think it's weird. It's okay if you think it's weird. Um, I want to be grateful. I want to thank people and, you know, personally say thank you to those that are giving. So if you don't like it, it's okay. It's not your stream. I like to thank those that give. I like to say their name out, acknowledge them, and appreciate them. So, again, if you don't like it, oh, well. You can live stream on your page. <laughs> okay. Let's read these. 
Isaiah Ventura. Pablo Felix, thank you. Said, well, can't wait to see you in Orlando. I can't wait to see you, Pablo. Davidson, thank you. I will be in Orlando next weekend, guys. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Isaiah Ventura, say God bless uh, ministry. Thank you. Um, Nancy Gomez said podcast. Okay, that was last week. Oops. Come on, Venmo. Don't do this to me, Venmo. Don't do this to me, Venmo. You guys know the Venmo acts up sometimes. Hold on. If it doesn't work, we're going to skip it for tonight, but let's try to get it to work here. Okay. Okay. Amy Van Hooser, thank you. Lucas Anderson, thank you so much. Michelle Duran, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Melissa Gone said, thanks for doing what you do. Thanks for bringing Julie into the broadcast. Thank you, Melissa. Gabby Hidalgo said, wonderful. Caroline Mojica said, I was blessed, I was blessed by tonight's testimony. All glory to Jesus. Thank you, Caroline. Rick Naranjo, thank you. Thomas Morton said, love Julie's testimony. Thank you, Thomas. Diana Ramos, thank you so much. DM Cab- um, Caballero, Caballero said, God bless. Melanie Parker, thank you, said Julie Lopez. Nina, thank you so much. Karen Garrido said, God bless you. I'm an ex-witch called the Prophecy and Deliverance 2. Would love to tell my testimony in your channel. Me and Julie and John Ramirez should do a conversation with you. I'm an end time warrior too. Thank you, Karen um, Garrido. Awesome, awesome. Praise the Lord. Maybe you could send me a link of your testimony. I would love to watch it. Oh man, I just lost it. Venmo is acting up, y'all. We need to cast the spirit of Venmo out of this. Daniela, thank you. Diana, thank you. Rebecca Moore, thank you. Oh, come on, Venmo. Oh, guys. So as I'm reading donations, it'll clear it and then take me to the very top. So I have to keep scrolling. Okay, let's try going backwards. Marissa Cabrera, thank you. Levi Alvarado, thank you. Nora Martinez, amazing testimony. God is on the move. Thank you for the work you do for the kingdom. Thank you, Nora. Candy Gutierrez, thank you. Carla Garcia, so this was so fire and beautiful. Thank you for this. Thank you, Carla. Kathy Corona, so what a blessing. Oh my gosh, fire, fire, fire. God bless both Isaiah and Julie. Ex, uh, Examara said, so great message. I'm sorry. I know I may mess up your name. I'm sorry. Jason Fradsham said, thank you for your ministry. We love your family. Thank you so much. Nestor Palacio said, Isaiah, bless you. And thank you for having Julie on. We love her testimony. Thank you, Nestor. Appreciate you. Pierre Carla, thank you so much. Said, this stream was fire. Most of my family is still in Colombia. Do you know what part of Julie is ministering out of? I don't know what part of uh, Colombia Julie's in. If she's in the chat, maybe she could put... What part of Columbia? Sarah Acker, thank you so much. I love God's work. Justin Porter, thank you so much. Daviana Martin, said sewing into her ministry. Thank you. Uh, Melissa Gutierrez, thank you. Oh, no. Hold on. Let me... This is Venmo, guys. I'm sorry about this. Venmo is acting up. Where were we at? I think we read almost all of them. Fun Buns, thank you. Shannon Howell, thank you. Oh, man. Okay. Venmo is... What just happened? All right. Raquel Atchison, thank you. Barrick Dell Angel, thank you. Juan Barrera, thank you. Daniel Rendon, thank you. Anton Douglas, say God bless you. Thank you, Marissa Cabrera, thank you. I think that's all of them on Venmo. Venmo is acting up, y'all. We need to pray for Venmo. It's acting crazy. Okay, Julie said she's in um, Pereira. I'm saying that's so wrong. Pereira, Colombia. I know I'm saying that wrong. I would love to get out to Colombia someday. I've always wanted to go over there someday. Okay, let's go through these Venmo ones. Jennifer Molina, thank you. Zuli Sarapura said, Hey, Isaiah, I've been busy serving at church, but so happy I was able to watch your live. Keep me in prayer. Gotcha. Thank you, Zuli. Stephanie Blaney said, Wonderful deliverance. Looking forward to her coming back. I was in homosexuality for 10 years and God delivered me. When we speak about our deliverance, it sets souls free. Thank you, Stephanie. Absolutely. Wow, amazing. Terrence Whaley said, May the Lord continue to use you and your family in a mighty way in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Terrence. Shan, um, Chanel, so this message was so great. I feel, felt spiritual attack as I was watching, but I watched still. I'm so glad. Took notes. My eyes are open. Awesome. Judy, thank you. Andrew Miller, thank you. Kodak Aguilar, thank you. Anthony Hawkins, thank you. Brianna Brogsdale, so I love Julie's um, teaching. My eyes were glued to the screen because it was so powerful. Me too. I loved it. It was a great, it was amazing. Thank you, Brianna. Winter Maldonado, thank you. Say glory be to God. Keep exposing, rebuking the darkness. Whitney Nyland said, what an awesome testimony. Definitely didn't seem like it was her second time saying it publicly. God bless. I know she said it so well. Aaron said, thank you. God bless your ministry. Thank you, Aaron. Judy said, I've repented from having readings. These encourages me in my walk and relationship. Thank you. Wow, so many. Every time I say, okay, anyways, thank you guys. So many generous donations tonight. What an awesome time. Awesome numbers. We, are, we still have 3,100 people on here. How incredible is that? Tonight, someone said you peaked at 5,600. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we've been live for an hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to jump off here soon because my kids are waiting for me to go play with them and do something with them. So every, someone said cancel your Netflix and support Isaiah. Hey, if you can monthly partner with Netflix, you can monthly partner with us. We appreciate you guys. 
Um, Julie's Instagram. Yes, it's it's uh U E uh Y U Y I I think underscore twenty three. I'm pretty sure that's right. I tagged her in. I'll I'll share her post right now. Okay, so I'm gonna share her. Okay, so I shared her Instagram post right now, so you guys can see that her account is on my story now. So there you go. If you want to follow her, you can go to my Instagram. There you go. And for all you new people, we appreciate you being here. We did have an inst uh, Facebook video go pretty viral this last week with like over 500,000 views in one day. So there's a lot of new people on Facebook. So we appreciate you being here. Hello. We stream Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at six o'clock and we upload every single day on YouTube. Okay, there's her Instagram. You guys see it. You can follow along with her ministry. Yellow said, this was awesome. I love her ministry and her testimony. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Don't feel bad, okay? So if you can't give, don't feel bad. No worries. Do not feel bad. Isaiah, are you working out? Not yet. Okay, I'm going to get back in the gym. I'm going to get back in the gym. I've just been busy working. I do work out. I just work out spiritually. But physically, no. I'm going to be soon. Hopefully this week, I'll be getting a gym membership again. Not so that I could get all ripped up and huge and buff, but so I could stay healthy. I got to stay healthy for the streams. For the kingdom. I got to stay healthy. Any plans in coming... Oh, and coming to California. Are you talking to Julie or me? I'm in California right now and I'll be preaching there, preaching in California on the 31st. Lem Lem, thank you so much. Said for Julie Lopez. Thank you, Lem Lem. I'll be sending her that right after. Isaiah gonna get buff confirmed? No, I'm just I'm just going to get back in shape like I used to be. And healthy. You've been saying that for the last year? <laughs> Alright, Hosanna, go ahead and call me out here. Hey! <laughs> Touche. You're right. I have been saying that for the last year. I've been busy, okay? I'm going to come on the stream all buff. No. Her YouTube's linked in the description. <laughs> Someone said you've been saying that for the last year. All right. Well, go ahead and roast me. Go ahead and roast me. No one can roast me more than Casey Gordon when she called me and said, the reason why you don't have tattoos is because you have to have muscles to have tattoos or something like that. She straight roasted me. When you come to Pennsylvania, I don't have any dates there. Yeah, she straight roasted me. She's like, Isaiah, you have to have muscles to have tattoos. I was like, what? All right. Yeah, I got to stay healthy for the kingdom for sure. Our body's a temple, so we want to take care of our temple. Listen. All right, I'm not gonna have to. I'm not gonna have to fight you guys and defend myself. There's three thousand of you and one of me, so I'm gonna lose this battle. Where are you going to preach? I'll be in Orlando this weekend. I will be in Stockton, California, the weekend after at Lifesong Church. Ugh, I need to post that on my website. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't. I need to. What's wrong with me? And then I'll be preaching in New Jersey. I think the month after. It's on the website. When are you coming to Dallas? I don't have a date right now. Thanks for answering my questions all the time. I got you, user. That was hilarious. Uh, are you bringing your fam to Orlando? No, I'm not. And I'm only going to be there for a day and a half. And the flight was 1500 Guys, I don't fly first class. I'm not a diva. I fly in the very back with all the chickens. That's where I fly, okay? I'm not first class or anything like that. Guess how much the flight was for a day and a half in Orlando? $1,500. So no, I'm not bringing the whole family. Okay, because that will be like seven, eight thousand dollars for my family to go to Orlando. That's insane. Fifteen hundred for one person, and I'm flying in the back with the chickens. I'm not a diva. I don't fly private. Okay, I don't fly first class. I, I fly in the back where all the chickens are at. <laughs> okay, <laughs> can't wait to see you in New Jersey. Why does your hairline look weird? I don't know. My hairline's all natural. I don't know what's weird about it. Who knows? Sorry if it looks weird to you. I apologize. Mm -mm. Also, guys, I I don't know. I'm using... Anyways, I'm not even going to go into it. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep going because I'm going to... Yeah, anyways. Some things I just think about I'm going to say and then I'm like, no, I'm probably not going to say that. So I, I stop. Super ridiculous. How, how are people affording this? I don't know, Jen, but it was $1,500 for one day. Grow out the jerry curls? No way. Where's the bobblehead? He's right here. He's alive and well. There you go. There he is. Wow, that was mean haters. It's all good. Hey, maybe their hairline, maybe they don't have a hairline. So mine looks weird to them. If you don't have a hairline, mine probably looks weird. Gary, 
Thank you. I got your prayer request, Gary. Thank you so much. I promise you guys, nothing people say online hurts my feelings. I've never once read a comment and my feelings were hurt, okay? Keyboard warriors do not hurt my feelings. I go to Puerto Rico for 300 bucks. Ugh, yeah, Orlando's five, 1500 right now. No, I don't have a private jet. I'm a barber of 18 years. Your hairline looks good. All right, 18 years and his hair looks good. Thank you, Kara. I do get my hair cut every week, so appreciate you. Guys, listen, I just read the comment because it was funny saying my hairline looked weird. I don't I don't need all the compliments, but thank you guys. I appreciate you, but don't don't feel like you have to defend me. But hey, maybe the person that said it doesn't have a hairline. We got it. You know, you never know. All right, I got to get off here, guys, because my kids are waiting for me. Please do a stream with your mom and grandma. That would be awesome. Isaiah's fate is fresher than Fiji water. <laughs> thank you, laser. I actually do look different in person. What you guys have to remember is the lenses we're using are ultra wide lenses. So they're going to make you look, they're going, they basically, I don't know how to explain it without being a nerd, but an ultra wide lens makes your face look like distorted. Like it makes your face look pulled back a little bit. Cause that's the way wide lenses work. Anyways, nerd talk. So when you see people online through like, especially nice cameras, just know that it does distort faces. You know, I meet people like, oh, you look different. Yeah, it's because you see me in front of a camera sitting down for three years. Yeah, it's a fisheye. There you go. It has a fisheye. This lens has a fisheye effect. So it makes everything like look tilted. So I do get a haircut every single week. Yes, I do. Because I get a razor fade and after like a week, it starts looking all crazy. I look like a Chia pet after a week. Right now I'm using, um, well, it's, it's a... Uh, 20 20 millimeter it's a 1.8 but it's uh it's an e-mount it's a full frame 20 millimeter so it's not like a you know it's not like a cropped lens 20 millimeter so it's anyways won't get into the nerd talk what camera and light it's a sony a7s3 with a sony g master i have a 1.4 24 millimeter and a 1.8 20 millimeter on the side but it's a sony a7s3 i have all my gear down below so i don't have to bore you with my nerd talk okay Listen, guys, there is 3,000 on you. I, 3,000 here. I hate to get off. I love you guys. I hate to get off right now, but I need to um, go hang out with my kids and family. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you can diss yourself better than I ever could. I got you, Shane. All right. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Amazing, amazing time tonight, guys. Um, this will be on the channel. You can watch it back. Friday, mass deliverance. Everyone's invited. It's going to be really, really good on Zoom. Love y'all. I will see you guys. I'll try to get as many people as I can on the Zoom. I think right now I have like a license for 2,000, but somebody texted me said you can get up to 50,000. So I don't know if we need that many, but we'll get we'll get enough people in, on there. I love you guys. I will see you guys on Friday night for Mass Deliverance. Love you guys. You guys are amazing. Sleep well. Appreciate y'all. Have a good night. Goodbye. Julie's testimony was amazing. My mom said Julie was so good. She communicated so well. I agree, mom. I'm glad you enjoyed it. My mom's always showing love in the chat. Thank you, mom. Love you and appreciate you. You guys want me to grow my hair out and not shave for a week so I can look like a straight Chia pet on stream? Stay on the live stream longer. Jaden, I will be back Friday night. Angus Joseph, thank you. Said Isaiah, my bro in Christ. I watch your ministry very often and saw this interview with Julie. She's for real. Thank God for her. I'm sending you some money for her and support her ministry. Thank you, Angus. I will make sure she gets it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you guys. Love y'all. Okay, guys, I won't cut my hair for a month and shave, and I'll come on here, you know, looking like a caveman. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Okay, I'll do the I'll do the bobblehead just because you guys are begging. There you go. See you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Love you guys. Goodbye. Love you from Kent. 